Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Wild. Coming out of the All-Star break, it's a nine-game homestand for the Reds, and so far, a pretty successful one. They'd like to cap it off in fine fashion as they welcome in the Arizona Diamondbacks for a three-game weekend set tonight on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi again, everyone, alongside the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley. I'm Jim Day. Thanks for joining us for Reds baseball. Two series and two series victories for the Reds coming out of the All-Star break. Jeff Brantley, what do you think's been the difference? Well, I think part of it has to do with the hitting. But hitting follows good pitching. The Reds have gotten good pitching, but the hitting has come right along with it. When you're scoring runs and you're getting good pitching, Hey, that puts victories on the board, and that guy has given the Reds some tremendous excitement, Billy Hamill. And both series, albeit against teams down in the standings like the Reds, you should win those games at home, but you don't play them on play paper, you play them on the field, and so far, so good for the Reds. Billy Hamilton has also been impressive Cowboy, and he's worked his way back to the leadoff spot tonight the hard way. Yeah, he really has, and I think the biggest thing for Hamilton is getting back to that pre-concussion swing, keeping the ball on the ground, keeping it close to the ground. Every time Hamilton gets the ball on the ground, it seems like he's getting on base and creating havoc. And we all know when he's on base, it seems like the Reds have a tendency to put runs on the board in bunches. We'll see if we see Billy Ball at the top of that lineup tonight. The Reds will give the ball to righty Dan Straley. Three consecutive quality starts for Straley, and I imagine you like what you saw last time out. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Jim, with Straley is his ability to throw his breaking ball for strikes. And I, and I think any time that you've got a pitcher on the mound and he's got control of his secondary pitches, I think it makes him that much more effective. We saw Straley in his last outing. He only walked one batter. That has been a downfall of Straley earlier in the season. He seems like he's got that corrected, not only with the fastball, but the slider and the changeup. Awfully good. He'll have to deal with a formidable middle of that Diamondbacks line. Up, namely Paul Goldschmidt and Jake Lamb. Yeah, both of those guys swinging the bat quite well. Jake Lamb a bit of a surprise, but he's hitting the ball for quite a bit of power here lately, hitting in that number four spot behind Goldschmidt. It's the Reds and Diamondbacks. First of three coming up, and when we come back, here we go again. But we mean it in a positive way. Jeff Acoro has the ascension of Joey Votto when we come back on Fox Sports Ohio.
is brought to you by the Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good, it's Skyline time. Hey guys, it's going to be a hot and steamy night at the ballpark tonight. Temperatures are going to be falling slowly through the 80s, and we have a stray chance for a storm at least early in the game. But hopefully we can get a win tonight. We'll see a little more sunshine late. Let's go Reds. <laughs> That's a home run right there. Nice forecast right there. That means the ball is going to be jumping. That means Joey Votto should get some hits tonight because since the All-Star break, this guy has been absolutely on fire. How about a 550 clip with a double, couple of home runs, five RBI, six walks. He's been using the entire field and playing great first base as well. So Joey is again in one of those groups. As a matter of fact, his 326 average in July for his career is the highest of any month. Wow, so tonight's IGS bringing the energy is Joey Votto. His highest career average versus any opponent. He hits 357 against Houston, 352 against Arizona, so he loves to head out west. 350 against Detroit, 328 against Washington. So Votto is on fire. Let's hope it continues tonight. The Reds have won four of six to start this mythical second half, and they've got Dan Straley on the mound tonight, who has 10 quality starts starts looking for number 11 and Hamilton in the leadoff. Ten quality starts, but making his first career appearance versus the Diamondbacks. Arizona and Cincinnati facing off for the first time in 2016. And here's how manager Chip Hale will lead it off with Gene Segura. Michael Bourne in the two spot. Then look out for Paul Goldschmidt and Jake Lamb back to back in that lineup. Former Cup Wellington Castillo, Brandon Drury in left field, Yasmani Tomas in right, Nick Ahmed at short, and Archie Bradley on the hill. Dan Straley, per usual, writing his great grandfather's initials in the dirt each and every time before he pitches. This season, Cowboy, have you been impressed? I think he's thrown the ball awfully well. I think there's been there have been some ball games that have gotten away from him a little bit, but I think continuing to make an adjustment on getting the ball in the strike zone, especially deeper into counts, has really helped him. First pitch in there for a ball. This game is underway. Carlos Torres calling balls and strikes behind the plate. Rob Drake at first. Sam Holbrook down at second base. Jerry Davis 
at third. 83 degree first pitch temperature. But if you're in Reds country right now, you know it feels a whole lot hotter than that. Heat index the last couple of days. In fact, they've put heat index warnings out for everyone. So tonight, especially for the pitchers, endurance could be a factor. Well hit ball center field. Hamilton going back and looking up, and that is out of here. Gene Segura leads off this game with a home run, and the Diamondbacks come to town swinging. Home run number eight on the season for Segura, and a one nothing Arizona lead. I think the Diamondbacks have to be awfully pleased with what they've gotten from Gene Segura in that leadoff spot. Not only the power numbers, but just his ability to get on base with regularity. Now Michael Bourne. He has had a little bit of a trip around the country this season. He rips one to right, but foul. He was designated for assignment by Atlanta on April 2nd, released by Toronto on May 7th, and then signed to a minor league contract with the Diamondbacks and worked his way up through the minor league system back to the big club. We're talking about a two time National League All Star 2010 and 2012. He's really helped the Diamondbacks. They have been suffering for outfield help. Well, they have been suffering in general as well and they really had high expectations coming into this season with a lot of the moves that the chief baseball officer Tony La Russa made the general manager Dave Stewart is born shoots one the other way and it looks like Duvall lost that ball in the sun. It gets by him and goes to the wall and Bourne is in there with a stand up double. Sun wreaking havoc this time of the night and in left field that is the sun field and it looked like he just didn't see the ball. Looked like he broke in the direction that the ball was headed but I think as the ball came down he just flat lost it. You don't see that too often out there but. As you mentioned it is the sun field and it is directly in the eyes. Of Duval. I don't think he saw it at all. I don't think so at all. And he's taken so many great paths to the ball in the outfield this season. So Dan Strell is going to have to work himself out of a hole. And a tough task here with Paul Goldschmidt stepping in. Paul Goldschmidt, one of the best players in the game you don't hear enough about. 4 time National League All Star including just recently in San Diego grounds one to Phillips at second base that'll get born to third one out in the inning. Here's your four defensive lineup for the Reds typical starting eight for Brian Price's club Duvall Hamilton Bruce in the outfield Suarez Cozart Phillips and Votto in the infield Tucker Barnard hanging the signs for Dan Straley. Very unselfish move there by Goldschmidt. You got a runner at second base with no outs. He hits the ball to the right side to get the runner to third. Now all you need is a fly ball to put the second run on the board for the Diamondbacks. And now it's Jake Lamb who's been one of the big surprises in baseball this season. Not because the Diamondbacks didn't think that he had potential. But man is he putting up the numbers. Twenty one home runs and twenty one doubles eighth in the National League in home runs with twenty one fifth in the National League with sixty five runs driven in. Also first in the National League with triples did you say triples did you I did say not doubles he's got eight triples but I was about to say slugging percentage I can imagine that he's probably if not among the top two he's probably first or second in the big leagues with the way he's swinging the bat. He is number one with a 618 slugging percentage. There's the list. Pretty good company. I would say so. One out in the inning, and Straley loses Lamb. So now first and third, and still only one out. Like Straley was trying to get Lamb to chase one off the plate. If he doesn't chase it, you get the right handed batter coming up next. 
But now if you're Dan Straley you're playing for a double play ball here. And that means you're going to try to get Wellington Castillo to chase a slider. Diamondbacks catcher steps in from the right hand side. 261 hitter 10 home runs. 30 runs driven in. One ball no strikes. This Arizona club comes in with a 40 and 55 record. They are 17 games back of the Giants. There goes the steal. And man he just stole that right off of Dan Straley. He went early. Straley hadn't even delivered the pitch. He had already taken off for second base before Straley even picked up his front foot off the ground. You see the move there. If you step off there you've got him. Nice. And Straley didn't hear it. You saw Barnhart stand up and you imagine the infielders were screaming. Perhaps a brain cramp. Nonetheless it's second and third. One out. This will certainly be deep enough to get the runner home from third base. Hamilton gets it. Tagging up from second base as well is Jake Lamb and it's a two nothing Arizona lead. The Diamondbacks have not gotten a whole lot in the pitching department this year but they're swinging the bats awfully well and they're coming in here at the Great American Ballpark with that same kind of attitude. Pitching has definitely been their downfall but you look at them offensively. They are third in the National League in average as a team 266. Scored 422 runs coming in right in the middle of the pack. And right in the middle of the pack in home runs. 108. They're bugaboo. Strikeouts and not walking enough. They are third in the National League in the number of strikeouts. And at the bottom of the league as far as drawing walks. It's very similar to the Reds. Their first baseman draws a lot of walks, sees a yep. lot of pitches, everybody else hacking. Left fielder Brandon Drury. And he pops it up. Hamilton's got it, but damage done here in the top of the first. The Diamondbacks score two. And the Reds coming up. Is where I've always been, and like I said, talking to Brian, he told me that if you don't earn the spot, it's not going to be yours. And that's and I took it in. And like I said, I, my job was to to get back to the top of the lineup, and which I'm coming here every every single day, working hard and trying to get there. I don't I don't want to be no lower than one or two. And like I said, for me to get this opportunity today is was pretty good. I was Brian Price said all along that if Billy Hamilton, who they want to be their leadoff hitter, not only now but in the future. 
and he wanted him to earn his way back and his play of late has done just that as he'll lead off with Cozart flip flopping spots he'll hit second Votto Bruce and Duvall Phillips Suarez Barnhart Dan Straley your Reds lineup tonight they are facing right handed pitcher Archie Bradley first pitch swinging and Billy Hamilton says thank you very much for moving me back to the top and here's why you did. Well Hamilton I'm sure is aware of the man behind the plate as we see this fastball right down the heart of the plate Hamilton hits it right back where it came from. But Wellington Castillo he can flat throw behind the plate. Billy has six stolen bases but Castillo has thrown him out five times. So here comes the chess match. You got it. Brian Price also talked about flip flopping Hamilton and Cozart in the order. Zach Cozart has a team leading 22 doubles on the season. So if Cozart continues on that clip, Billy Hamilton can score from first a lot. Of course, the way Hamilton's been running, he may score from first on a single. Indeed. Archie Bradley holding that ball a long time and now Cozart calls timeout. You have to vary not only your picks to first base but your cadence coming to the plate. You hold the ball you move quick you hold the ball you move quick. Try to keep Billy in somewhat of a uncomfortable position at first. First pitch to Cozart there goes Billy throw down to second base and they got him. Wellington Castillo. You could say has Hamilton's number. It's the sixth time he's got him. Billy looked like his jump was not quite as good as we've seen in the past, and maybe that's a credit to Archie Bradley in holding the ball as much as he did. Well, Hamilton might have got that right hand in there. Reds are looking at this for sure. Brian Price on the steps, holding up play. They but want to look at it. Left hand comes up and he stabs the right hand in there. And I think they are going to look at it. I tell you what. He may be safe. That is a terrific. Look at him pull back the left hand and then go in there with the right hand. And he knew he was going to make contact with Segura too. That is a terrific job of getting into second base. I think they're going to rule him safe. I agree. That was not a swipe tag by Segura. Segura reached for the left arm, and that was the arm that Hamilton pulled away. Well, we'll see what New York says about this one. Crew Chief Jerry Davis on the headsets, along with second base umpire Sam Holbrook. Well, regardless of how this call comes down, Hamilton already creating that atmosphere that we've seen him do so many times here in this homestand and up and down this season. It would be the team leading 28th steal for Hamilton if he's safe against only five caught stealings. And you could see the anxious look in Billy's eyes. He's ready to run back out there to second base. There it is. No it's not. Slide the right hand in there. Now if Segura comes down with a tag and swipes all the way across. He gets Hamilton. Yep. But he dropped the tag down as if to tag the left arm, and Billy pulled it away. And Billy is going so fast. You would better swipe that quickly. Pulled the left hand back and then put it back on the bag. That's what allowed him to stop instead of sliding over the top of the bag. He's safe. He is safe. To a good challenge by the Reds. Now let's check it out in real speed. And this is how quickly he moves and how quickly you got to get the tag down. Bang! It happens in an instant. One minute 48 seconds on the replay time. Which anything under two minutes nowadays will take. Even when you do everything correct from a defensive side, you still don't get Hamilton. That's amazing. That is a. To be moving that fast, 
terrific slot. And still have the mindset to pull the left arm up. Instincts, he talked about it many times. In fact, he says, he uses the term, I just do stupid things on the field. I don't even know what I'm doing. It's just instinctual. Can't teach it. Ball, no strikes to Zach Kozar. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Archie Bradley from Muskegee, Oklahoma. Coming off of two straight quality starts. He's had some awfully good ball games. He did have a five run game three starts ago, but other than that, he's thrown the ball awfully well. He's had some problems with control when there has been issues, and that control tends to lead to the long ball. Last time out, Saturday against the Dodgers, six innings, one earned run, did walk three batters, which has been a problem for him. Three strikeouts through 106 pitches. Once again, Billy Hamilton getting into the head of the pitcher. Bradley's a former top prospect and has really held his own through 12 starts to date. 1.37 ERA, a 1.41 whip. 2 1 pitch to Kozar. Outside 3 and 1. Has an impressive strikeout per nine innings rate, does Bradley. 9.28, but gives up too many walks. 4.22 walks per nine innings. Home well, runs have also been his downfall. I would imagine as Bradley moves along in his career, he'll develop a little shorter breaking ball to go along with that knuckle curve. Walks Kozar with an open base at first. So the Reds trying to cut into a 2 0 deficit. A good start here to the bottom of the first. First and second, nobody out. One of the hottest hitters in baseball, Joey Votto, stepping in. And let's see if the Diamondbacks vacate third base with Votto at the plate. We've seen Hamilton take advantage of that so many times when the third baseman plays off the bag towards the shortstop position. Hamilton just beats him to the bag, but it looks like Lamb is going to stay at his spot for the time being. 271 hitter overall, but that has been steadily climbing since the All Star break. Joey Votto hitting 550, the best of any National League player, and a cool 400 the entire month of July. First pitch to Joey, fouls it off. First pitch knuckle curveball. That ball st starts right about the belt of Votto and it drops straight down. Joey with a home run here yesterday as the Reds closed out a series victory. He's hitting all six games as you see safely since the All Star break. Left field. Hit very well, and that ball is gone. What'd you say, Vada was hitting? Over 400 now, <laughs> right? Wow. Over 400 in the month of July. Add to that 550 since the All Star break, and back to back days with a home run. This one, a three run home run, and just like that, the Reds lead three to two. That's a big time answer for the Reds there offensively. All started with Billy Hamilton. Down and away to Votto, even choked up on the bat. He tags this one right on the money, and he knew it. Home run number 17 on the season for Joey. And we saw it last year, just on a incredible tear. Small sample size in the mythical second half, but that's Jay Bruce off the pitcher and no play for Bradley. Infield base hit, Jay Bruce. Third hit of the inning for the Reds. See where this got Bradley. 
right off the back of the left spike. Bradley's fastball pretty straight. If you pitch up around the mid thigh and it's straight and out over the plate, it's going to get hit hard. That's what we've seen so far in this inning. Still nobody out in the meeting. My pitching coach, Mike Butcher, trying to settle Bradley down. Check out your four defensive lineup for the Diamondbacks. Left to right around the outfield. Drury, Bourne, Tomas, Lamb, Ahmed, Segura, and Goldschmidt in the infield. Wellington Castillo behind the plate catching Archie Bradley. Paul Goldschmidt, all-star. Jay Bruce, all-star. Getting reacquainted at first base. Now Adam Duvall. The runner on first and nobody out. Ball one. Duvall coming out of the break just three for 17. As you look at his numbers overall tied for third in home runs with 23. Does have a double and three RBIs on this homestand coming out of the break but he'd like to better that three for 17 clip. One oh outside no called strike. One and one. This is what the Diamondbacks have been watching all year regardless of who's been on the mound been able to score some runs but they have not been able to stop anybody else. Slow roller. Only plays at first base and they just get Duvall. Does Ahmed. Ahmed had the double clutch on that ground ball and even though Duvall was hustling all the way he just did get him. Check him out. Didn't quite get the grip when he came up. Still able to snap a throw over there, even though it was down in the dirt. Goldschmidt picks it. Hustling per usual, Adam Duvall down to first base. It moves Bruce to second base. And with one out in the inning, Brandon Phillips riding a nine game hitting streak. Average up to 260 for Phillips. We showed that defensive positioning of the Diamondbacks. Brandon Drury, who's playing left field, is normally a third baseman or a second baseman. Michael Bourne, of course, as you mentioned earlier, was not even on the roster when they began the yep. season. And Yasmani Tomas should be playing at third base. That's his natural position, but they've got guys in the outfield because of injuries that David Peralta and A.J. Pollock, they're having to play infielders and outfield spots. Arizona club as that ball hits Brandon Phillips. So now first and second again. Just Nick Phillips on that back of the right arm. He's probably relieved it just nicked him. Because he's been beat up. Especially with that broken hand, he's got a hairline fracture on the left hand. Diamondbacks thought about looking at it to no avail. Chappelle says play on. And you mentioned the injuries for this Diamondbacks club. They've been decimated by injuries and decimated by disappointments. One of them being Shelby Miller. Who they actually sent to the minor leagues after signing a big contract. Zach Grinke still on the disabled list with that dreaded oblique injury. He's been late in coming back. Two hundred and six million dollar man Zach Grinke. Diamondbacks fully expected to contend in the AL or NL West this season and it is simply not happened. 
seemed like after the trade of Ender Enciarte and Dansby Swanson, the Braves that brought Shelby Miller over. Miller not able to step up to the plate and perform as the Diamondbacks thought. It's been downhill ever since. And Chip Hale, lots of reports circulating around him about his future. As you see the National League West, and they are buried at the bottom. Chip Hale job on the line. Lots of talk about him being removed, his duties. Like he talked about it today, he said, I would just say you're never surprised in this game about anything. And he wouldn't be surprised if he got that call at any moment. Two balls, one strike, the count to the Reds' third baseman, Eugenio Suarez himself riding a four game hitting streak. Diamondbacks in one of those positions that you're expected to win and then you don't. It's usually when heads roll. It's just the way that the game works. Archie Bradley about to deliver pitch number 20 in the first inning. Run the count full. Three balls, two strikes to Suarez. Three two pitch. And he walked it. So Bradley is struggling mightily. Two walks in the inning, a hit batsman, and a three run home run. Trying to throw a 3 2 knuckle curveball. Big breaking hook is difficult to throw for a strike anyway, a strike to get called. In today's baseball, you don't hear the knuckle curveball very often. Oh, and right now, it's not just the curveball, it's the fastball and everything Bradley's throwing, he's having a difficult time with. Bradley's done well with runners in scoring position as far as average goes this season. In fact, he's on top of Major League Baseball. 132 opponent batting average with runners in scoring position this year. In steps Tucker Barnhart as you see the numbers he has been on quite the tear offensively including a home run here yesterday. First pitch ball. Jay Bruce at third. Brandon Phillips at second. Suarez at first one down as the Reds have he he raced a two nothing deficit and Lee here three to two and hopefully counting. 1 0 to Barnhart. Outside, Bradley having all kinds of troubles finding the strike zone. One of those spots for Bradley where you've just got to pitch down. You've got to throw whatever you can get over the plate and hope you can get a ball hit right at somebody on the infield. Two-o. Barnhart swings away right at Goldschmidt. This could be two. Pitcher gets over there. Bradley, did he get the bag? He did. And the Diamondbacks get out of the inning. 3 6 1 on the double play. And Bradley sliding and getting the wow. base. I tell you what. It's a pretty good play. That's a good play right there. And man, did Archie Bradley need it. Saves another run and perhaps more. But the Reds take the lead. We're through one at GABP.
Boris Babip. That would be batting average on balls in play. Better known as Babip. Dan Straley on the list. 236 opponents batting average of balls that are put in play this season. I think when you look at Straley, when he's throwing strikes, he seems to get outs in bunches. It's when he gets behind in the count and he's unable to get the ball over the plate, that's when he's gotten himself in trouble. He's had no balls, two strikes to the right fielder for the D-backs tonight, Yasmani Tomas. Big dude is Tomas, 6'2", 250. And when he gets into one, look out. Hit a 460-foot home run June 28th. Longest home run by the Diamondbacks this season. And normally for Tomas, he's swinging at anything close. One two pitch foul back. Tomas has reached base safely in 19 of his last 21 games. Swing and a miss. First strikeout of the night for Dan Straley. Pretty good change up there by Straley. See the ball come in. Just looks like it's going to start and stay on the outside corner and it just drops down in the middle of the plate. And now Nick Ahmed batting eighth tonight playing shortstop for Chip Hale. 220 average four home runs 20 runs driven in. I think the Diamondbacks thought Ahmed would hit more than what he has. He's been awfully good at shortstop. Well, he's certainly a defensive first guy, but you're right. They expected more offensively out of him. His 12 defensive runs saved are second amongst all shortstops, trailing only Brandon Crawford. Such a stand. Not a guy that you want to walk if you're Dan Straley. It's one pitch away from doing that. Down the heart of the plate, three balls, one strike. Falling behind 3-0, the count's gone full. The 3 2 pitch. We'll do it again. Now, there are some guys, some hitters that you just throw the ball over the plate. You don't have to be so close to the edge. You're middle away or middle in, and you make them get themselves out. Now, if you're facing Paul Goldschmidt, that's a different story. But with Nick Ahmed and the pitcher following right behind him, you make him swing the bat. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts to open up the second here for Dan Straley. We're in a 3 2 front door slider. Check this pitch out. Starts on the inside corner and then just drops straight down. Ahmed well out in front of that one as he goes down on the back knee. Pretty pitch. Now his counterpart, Archie Bradley. Two hits and 22 plate appearances this season. And I don't think he appreciated that strike call right there. But Carlos Torres. The only thing that you can say if you're a pitcher standing with the plate and you get a pitch like that is you just look back and say, I want that pitch. <laughs> I want that one down. See ya. Strikes him out looking. Dan Straley strikes out the side and holds on to a 3-2 lead.
Reds lead it three to two over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Boy, this has been a totally different team here in the second half. They have won four of six to start this second half. What am I talking about? Check out these numbers. It is our Lowe's home field advantage. Reds at home this season. You see the pre all star numbers and the post all star numbers. Huge difference there. And they're off to a great start tonight. Three hits, a home run, a couple of walks, hit by pitch, three runs scored. Everything higher with the exception of slugging percentage. And Jim Cowboy, you might be wondering why are they wearing red? It is a night game. Dan Straley, the pitcher, requested they wear the red jerseys tonight. So red jerseys and what the pitcher wants the pitcher normally gets including and this is very very big in clubhouses choice of music there is always music blaring down there and the starting pitcher before the game gets his choice the key there is starting pitcher exactly if you're not that day starting pitcher you get nothing he's rung up here is straley still seeking his first hit of the season now 0 for 26 after being rung up here. All right, if you come to the game as a fan, check out the upper right hand corner one handed snag. Now we looking good. Pretty good catch there, bro. Nicely done. Didn't even need his glove. All right, top of the order now, Billy Hamilton. Singled in the first, stole second, scored on Joey Votto's three run home run. Votto, if you're just joining us, or excuse me, Hamilton, if you're just joining us, back to the top of the lineup. Brian Price has wanted to do it all along, but he wanted Billy to earn it. Billy Amata's four game hitting streak has hit safely in six of his last seven appearances. You can look at the numbers all you want, but if you also just look at his approach and look at the number of line drives and ground balls he's hitting as opposed to balls in the air, it's been a different Billy Hamilton. I think the key for Hamilton is he's letting the ball travel further than he was in the beginning of his career. He's made adjustments to try to hit the ball up the middle and through the left side not really pulling the ball so much and not chasing those curveballs in the dirt as we saw the first two pitches there from Bradley. Well, I was up here wondering about those red jerseys myself and asked a few people up here no one knew. But we're on the scene down there along the dugout. Good information there. As Hamilton shoots one the other way and he's two for two. Will he try it again? Buckle your seatbelt. Here we go again. Fastball up middle. Stays right on top of it. A short downward swing by Hamilton. Not that loop in the back of the swing. Just short and quick to the baseball. Hamilton stole second base in the first inning and it was all because of a terrific slide. He was originally called out by second base umpire Sam Holbrook. It went to replay. The Reds won that replay as Billy pulled back that left arm and got his right hand in there. But we'll reiterate Wellington Castillo behind the plate has been the best at throwing out Billy Hamilton. There goes Billy. Throw down. Not this time. Second stolen base of the game. Stolen base number 29 on the season. Looked like even with the head first slide from Hamilton. Got a, a spike on the hand or something on the hand, the right hand of Gene Segura. Closer look here. The ball hit his hand. Yep. Billy's in scoring position. You better believe he's in Bradley's head. We've seen it 
already once on this home stand now twice here tonight where Hampton's gotten the board. Pitcher pays so much attention to Billy Hamilton. Next thing you know, Votto hits the ball out of the ballpark. There goes Billy. Throw down to third. A good throw, but Billy still gets in there. Steals second. Steals third. Third of the game. Billy ball. You gotta love it. See Hamilton rocking back and forth, and then he is off to the races. It's the one adjustment that we've seen from Hamilton that we didn't see when he first got to the big leagues. He continues his movement, and that allows him just that little bit of burst of energy to take off. With one out, a fly ball. I don't even want to say a deep fly ball will get him home. We've seen him score on a short fly ball to the outfield. 14 steals of third base now. And look at the comparison to other teams, not other players, other teams. He's ahead. Only trailing Milwaukee and Cleveland as a team. Stealing third base. I mean, you can't change the game more than getting on, stealing second, stealing third. And all of a sudden, you're a fly ball away from scoring. Game changing stuff. But you force the infield in. And even at that point, unless you get a ball directly to an infielder that's hit hard, you're not going to get Hamilton at the plate anyway. Yep. Infield playing in, as you see. The 2 2 pitch to Kozar. Got him swinging. Second strikeout of the inning for Bradley and a big one. Now Votto who delivered the difference in this game a three run home run back in the first. Hamilton and here it is. The other way. Out of here. And that wasn't barely out of here. That was way out of here. Didn't appear to be that bad of a pitch when it was released. Mono just went out there and got it. Middle away, shoots it out of left field. Average up to 571 since the All-Star break. See how Bradley approaches him with first base open. Even the body language is different from Votto here. It's almost as though he knows he's going to get a hit. It's just a matter of where. Check his eyes out as the ball's coming to play. Lays off and a called strike. And Votto didn't like it. So many pitchers bust Joey Votto in this season, but the first three in this at bat, down and away. Came in there with a fastball and a pretty good pitch following a changeup. And that was a pitch earlier in the season. It seemed like it really tied up Votto. Either, either that was a pitch that he took for strike three or a pitch that he would pop up. This time he fouls it off to get a new one. Do the one two again. Here it comes downstairs. You let that ball get even a little bit away on a pitch. Here comes Hamilton. Castillo doing a nice job there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Hamilton at third. Votto stays alive. That patented, just get a piece, foul it off, and wait for another pitch. But that looked like the changeup. Same location, same speed as the pitch that was called for strike two. This time, Votto, well, if you're going to call it a strike, I've got to go hit it. He fouls it off. Out 
side three and two. Three two pitch. Right at the third baseman. For the third out of the inning. Red strand a runner. Still lead by one. Rocket arms, red strikeout leaders this season. And after striking out the side in the second, Dan Straley on top as far as team. This team goes, the Reds team. 84, 87 strikeouts, excuse me, and 110 in the third innings. Brandon Finnegan, 78 punch outs. Straley will deal with the top of the order in Gene Segur, and he hit him with the first pitch. And now a little motion out to Straley. And a conversation with Barnhart. And a heated one at that. Now, Matt Williams, the third base coach for the Diamondbacks, will pull Segura away. That appeared to be a breaking ball. Segura had some exception to being hit by the pitch, and that comes after he hit the home run to begin the ball game. The umpires are going to get together here and talk. So now a conversation with Brian Price at the Reds dugout. Wondering if they're issuing a warning right away after that fastball in. Well, I said it appeared to be a break ball. It was indeed a fastball. It did not appear to me that it was that far inside. Jeff McCrow, you got more downstairs? Yeah, Sam Holbrook just came over and told Brian Price, look, to keep things down with both teams, we're going to go ahead and warn you guys right now. So there you go. And Brian said, I understand, but that was a breaking pitch. So. Well, if both benches are warned, if anyone else is deemed hit on purpose, it'll be an automatic ejection of the manager and the pitcher. Now Michael Bourne at the plate with the runner on first base. After just picking up the game, as Cowboys said, Gene Segura led off this game with a home run. 
crushed it to deep center field. In Segura's mind, I guess he felt he hit him on purpose. And who knows? Only that guy in the round circle in the middle of the field knows. And you can understand the, the feelings of Segura. You hit a ball out of the ballpark to dead center to begin the game. The next pitch hits you in the left arm. Segura leads the Diamondbacks team in stolen bases with 16. He's 16 for 21 in that department. I would imagine he would like to steal here. Getting hit by a pitch, seemed to be upset. See if the Reds can use that to their advantage. Well, you notice Straley stepped off, and Segura didn't even move back to first base, and gave him the stare down, and still giving him the stare down. Be it now, he'll look down to the signs to Matt Williams. Great player Matt Williams was, the manager of Washington Nationals, now back with the Diamondbacks organization. Made a mind for a long time out in San Francisco. The big Marine. Hard nosed guy. Very much so. Two balls, one strike to Michael Bourne. Throw over. Goes the runner and rip towards right, but foul. Seems like every time Matt Williams goes through the signs at third base, Dave McKay, the first base coach, is into the ear of Gene Segura almost as a reminder of what the signs are. Two two pitch swing and a miss and Straley has struck out three or excuse me four of the last five batters. This is a pitch that Michael Bourne has struggled with his entire career that breaking ball even though that was not a very good breaking ball just the off speed pitch he has a difficult time with. Now one of the toughest tasks in the league. That's facing Paul Goldschmidt. Ground ball to third. Suarez to Phillips on the first base. That's a double play. Reds lead 3 2 going to the bottom of the third.
thanks to Fox Sports Ohio the first twenty five thousand fans will receive a Reds cap. It's a good looking cap as well. Reds and D-backs you can see it for just twelve dollars. Tickets call five one three three eight one Reds or visit Reds dot com. As you look at the cool zone here at GABP with the mist flying. A hot steamy night at GABP. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> it's not a drinking fountain though. Jay Bruce will lead off the bottom of the third for the Reds. Infield single back in the first. You know, the Diamondbacks uniforms look like they've had those misters blowing on them the entire ball game. They look a little wet. Wanted to get your thoughts on these uniforms because they have been met with mixed reviews. They indeed look like wet cement. <laughs> wet cement or each player has been sweating profusely for nine innings. You like them? Not like them. Not a big fan. I'm not sure they present well on TV. They probably look better in person than they do on TV. I don't think so. You <laughs> think they look bad either way? They just look, they look wet. Three balls, one strike. To Jay Bruce. And he walked him. But I do like the red tops. And if you're just joining us and wondering why the Reds have red tops on, because normally those are reserved just for day games. Tonight starting pitcher Dan Straley apparently requested the red tops. Whatever makes the guy on the bump feel more comfortable, you do. Because it starts with that guy right there on the Just go mic. seven, baby. Just go seven. <laughs> now Adam Duvall. Adam grounded out back in the first. 23 home runs, 64 runs driven in. Just two RBIs behind the team lead held by Jay Bruce. Time. Now a little meeting of the minds. Well, it looks like Bradley here tonight. The only pitch he's been able to get over the plate has been the fastball, and it hasn't been real consistent. Well, he's a good athlete. If you follow college football, you might remember the name Archie Bradley. He committed to play football at the University of Oklahoma and they told him he could also pitch for the Sooners but the Diamondbacks chose Bradley as their first pick the seventh overall pick it's quarterback right yep and what will really change your mind a five million million dollar signing bonus I would have to say so Talked with his family, looked at the pros and cons of both options. At the end of the day, he knew playing baseball was his best decision. Five million chance of a concussion. Five million chance of a concussion. Five million, no guarantees. He's an all-around sports guy, if you will. He wants to be a sports analyst in the future. We'll probably try to talk him out of that. <laughs> or he's mentioned becoming a personal trainer, something in sports, maybe sports management. He just wants to stay in sports. And he's walked back to back batters here in the bottom of the third. A reminder as the pitching coach comes to the mound for another meeting of a Reds home run. It's the Toyota sign during tonight's game. Luke Wheeler, Hamilton, Ohio, will get the beautiful new Tundra on display here at the yard. You can register for your chance to win in an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Well, we mentioned at the beginning of the ball game that 
But Archie Bradley has had difficulty throwing strikes. He's given up home runs. But tonight he's already walked four batters. He's already given up a home run with one of those walks aboard. Now the Reds have another golden opportunity to add to their lead. You don't get this many chances in a ball game. If you can make it happen early and put some separation between you and the opponent, well, you really want to take advantage of it. The Reds have a great chance here. Already action in the D backs pen. Josh Colmenter, the righty, warming up. One of nine pitchers in their bullpen. Nine. They had ten coming out of the break. Wow. And that makes you shake your head. Why? Got Zach Grinky on the deal, as you mentioned earlier. Shelby Miller pitching in Triple A, which, which is unbelievable, to, even fast. Say, Brandon Phillips at the plate. First pitch swinging out of play. Big splash for the Diamondbacks and signing Zach Grinky. You wonder if that just put too much pressure on or if it just applied some artificial pressure to this club coming out of spring training. Well, it's certainly tough when Grinky continues to be on the disabled list. The one pitch to Phillips fouls it off. And again, I was mentioning to you, I don't know, six years ago, I, I'm not sure I knew what an oblique was. But we see a rash of oblique injuries. Including Zach Grinky. Grinky injured his oblique on June 28th in a game against the Phillies at Chase Field. We saw that with Anthony DiScafani. He missed two months. Right. And he said it's been very frustrating trying to work his way back. They're not sure what Grinky did, how he sustained it. While running the bases. Could have done it while batting. He wasn't exactly sure. But he has just begun to flirt with throwing. Is Zach Grinky. Bradley bounces that one up there. Balls, two strikes. First and second, nobody out. Bruce takes his lead from second. Duvall from first. And the 2 2 pitch to Phillips. Brandon keeps fouling them off. Brandon would love to get into one here. Not only would it move his hitting streak to 10 games, but he hasn't homered in 59 games and now 235 plate appearances. Comes the 2 2 again. Just got a piece to stay alive. Brandon really looks like he's trying to shoot the ball into right field. A little tardy on those fastballs, and that breaking ball looked like he was a little bit out in front. Check swing. Bradley lets it go by. Moves the runners up. It wasn't pretty, but it did the job. Put it in play and do whatever you can to get those runners over. And indeed, Phillips does just that. The ground out. One out, second and third for A. Eugenio Suarez. This is another guy I think the Reds would really like to have a strong second half and a good finish to this 2016 season. Swinging the bat good since the break. First pitch to Suarez. 
Breaking ball in there for a strike. Two thirty four hitter, sixteen home runs, forty two RBIs. Inside, one and one. Diamondbacks were playing in earlier with Hamilton at third base, and now with Bruce at third, they got the infield all the way back. Get a ground ball to the shortstop of the second baseman. You got to run. One ball, two strikes. There are times when Suarez swings the bat. His swing looks awfully long. Looks like he's making a loop as it comes to baseball instead of down and to the ball. Almost as though he's trying to lift every pitch. Here comes the one two. Got him. Big out for Bradley. Her ball in the dirt. You can see Suarez lunging for that pitch. Pretty good break on the breaking ball. Suarez was late on the previous fastball. It looked like he tried to start a little bit earlier to get to the fastball. He ends up with the breaking ball in the dirt. They're going to intentionally walk Tucker Barnhart with first base open. They'll load him up with the pitcher Dan Straley. That was a rather large strikeout of Suarez. It'll be the fifth walk of this game for Archie Bradley. Albeit this one, the intentional variety. This would be a pretty good time for Dan <laughs> Straley to come up with his first hit of the season. This is a no brainer in the strategy department. And a guy that does not have a hit versus a guy that's been on a tear lately in Tucker Barnhart. In fact, Dan Straley has no hits as a professional in 51 combined plate appearances. He only had 14 total professional plate appearances before this season. Got a piece. Boy, he was really late on that one. That's why I said he got a piece. Base is juiced. Strike two called. Probably going to get the hook now. Saw two fastballs. You don't get one of those early and you're a pitcher. Drop the hammer on you. Drops it and pays the price. Red strand three. We're off to the fourth.
Streaming sports service delivers everything you have come to expect and more. It includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. On to inning number four for Dan Straley. Trying to hold on to a one run lead. Wearing those red tops for his request. And he'll face Jake Lamb. Lead off the fourth for the fourth for the Diamondbacks. And a big shift put on by the Reds. Kozart, Phillips, Vado all on the right side. Suarez the only one on the left side. Check swing and a strike. The way this ball game began, I thought we were heading to double digits in the offensive category quickly. All five runs were scored in the first. Gene Segura lead off home run in the first. Sacrifice fly RBI Wellington Castillo. As Straley has the strikeout pitches going tonight. That's strikeout number five in three and a third innings. Pretty good change up right there. Threw a high breaking ball on the pitch before that Lamb was well out in front. He was way out in front of that changeup. Five of the last seven Diamondback batters have gone down via the strikeout. And getting back to those red tops, which the Reds normally use, wear during day games, requested by Straley tonight. Well, Joe Lockup hands me the stats that might tell the tale. In night games, Straley was 0 for 5 with a 460 earn run average. Day games, 4 and 1, 3.35 ERA. Well, there you go. And normally the Reds wear these red tops during day games. And I don't know. Sometimes baseball players are a little superstitious. Sometimes. <laughs> well, I was saying it sarcastically. <laughs> Some of them say to play good, you got to feel good. Some of them say to play good, you got to look good. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. One ball, one strike. To Wellington Castillo. Two. Slider and the breaking ball have been awfully good for Straley here tonight. You almost get the sense that Straley pitches backwards a little bit. Explain that. Well, pitching backwards instead of trying to get ahead in the count with a fastball early. As a lot of power pitchers do. If you're going to pitch backwards, you throw either a breaking ball or a curveball on the first pitch. Then maybe a slider, mix it up a little bit, and finish the hitter with a fastball. That's exactly how he's gone after Castillo here. Breaking balls early, trying to slow the bat down, slow his eyes down a little bit, trying to surprise him with the fastball late. Two pitch fouls it back. It's an incredible number there at the bottom number. After being behind in the count one and zero, oh, normally pitchers get hammered. Now, how do you explain that? The changeup and its efficiency in the strike zone. Popped up. No, no, no. Out of play. I think Dan Straley is the type of pitcher that will throw you any pitch in any count. And that has a tendency to keep batters off balance. And most hitters are looking 1 0, they're looking for a fastball. If you can make the pitch look like a fastball, you'll get an aggressive swing. And Straley's changeup looks just like his fastball as it comes to the plate. Eighth pitch of the at bat against Castillo. And it's a strike. 
back to back strikeouts here in the fourth six overall for Dan Straley. You can see Tucker Barnhart tapping the ground before this ball came to the play. Puts a change up right on the inside part of the plate but you could see Castillo way out in front. You got a pitcher on the mound throwing a two strike change up that means he's got a good one. He has struck out six of the last eight batters he's faced. And now tangling with Brandon Drury. We got to fly out back in the first. Amongst National League rookies, third in average, 267 coming in, fourth in doubles. He's hit safely in 10 of his last 12 games. He's played all around the field. He's made 25 starts in right field, 19 in left field, 14 at third base, and four at second base. Straley walks him. Walk of the game for Straley. Still have to make some pitches to this guy. He may be hitting the number seven spot. He's got a wild swing, swings at a lot of pitches. He's got some serious pop as well. Yes, Manny Tomas struck out swinging. The lead off the second. Gets into one here. Left center field off the wall. They're going to hold the runner at third. As Tomas is in there with the stand up double. Did a nice job of getting that ball back to the infield and holding Drury at third base. I thought Matt Williams was going to send Drury no matter what there with two outs and a ball off the wall, but instead he held him. And you got the 220 hitting Nick Ahmed at the plate. It would have been interesting there because the ball was airmail and they're going to intentionally walk Ahmed to get to the pitcher spot. And you can see that throw from Duvall, airmail clear to the Middle of the infield where Vada was there. Would have been interesting had they sent Drury home. So we'll see if that comes back to bite the D backs. I think Duvall just grabbed the ball and fired to second base, but both of the infielders, shortstop and second, had moved into tandem relay. They were playing for the play at the plate, and then the runner was held at third. They're going to send Archie Bradley to the plate. He will indeed take his turn with the bases loaded and two outs. Chip Hale not wanting to go to his bullpen this early in the game. Only a one run game. Same spot Straley was in to finish the bottom of the third. Yep. Ground ball to Kozar. They go the short way to Phillips. They just get the runner at second base. And Straley dances around Tremble. The Reds hold on to their lead.
now Holly Holm will face a kickboxing legend, Valentina Shevchenko. Coverage of Fox UFC Fight Night begins tomorrow at 6 Eastern only on Fox. And Archie Bradley goes back to the hill, and man, did he have a scary moment April 28th of last season. It was a pitch to Rocky's outfitter, Carlos Gonzalez, and right back and hit him right in the face. They registered that ball coming off the bat of Carlos Gonzalez at 115 miles per hour. He left the field under his own power, and the team said he never lost consciousness. He was taken to the hospital. Testing revealed he had no concussion symptoms and no broken bones at the time. 115 miles per hour got him in the left cheek, or excuse me, the right side of his face. And Bradley said after it happened and he went to get back on the mound, he knew that he couldn't get back on the mound until he looked at the video of it. And some guys, as Billy Hamilton flies out to left to lead off the bottom of the fourth, some guys just don't want to see that ever again. He wanted to look at the video, know what happened, and not be scared the next time he took the hill. And in the end, he suffered a slight sinus fracture on that play. And we told you that he accepted a scholarship to be a quarterback at Oklahoma, and he credited being a quarterback in football would help me get over it. He said he was hit so many times under the chin while delivering a pass that he said it, it felt similar to that. Learn how to take a hit. Yep. He says now he doesn't think about it. He says he's not scared of it happening, mentally not scared of it. Yeah, I think I think every pitcher when you go to the mound, you know that's gonna that can be a possibility. I mean, there were plenty of balls that were hit by my head on the mound. You didn't even know what you didn't even know where the ball was until it landed back by second base. I'll show you the I mean how good a hitter that Gonzalez was. It was a curveball at 82 miles per hour that he hit 115 miles per hour. Kozar sends one in the air to center. Horns there. Two outs in the inning. Well, it looks like both pitchers, both Dan Straley and Archie Bradley, have kind of fought through some difficult times there early in the ball game. Australia especially he's had the strikeout pitch working. Well, two outs Joey Votto. He's the difference in this game right now A three run home run is 17th back in the first. Game the Diamondbacks did not play Votto to pull on the infield. They played more of a conventional defensive positioning. If he hits the same ball that he hit with the bases loaded, he got a base hit here. He'll line drive right at the third baseman. And that's the shortstop Ahmed on the left side. The third baseman's playing up the middle. Seen many types of shifts employed. Sometimes a shortstop will go over to the right side, sometimes the third baseman. In this case, right up the middle is third baseman Jake Lamb. Bottle now with 17 home runs on the season and has been on a tear. Coming out of the break. Two two pitch. A 
Upstairs three and two. Reds have five players with 15 or more home runs. That is tied with the Orioles for the most in Major League Baseball. Five with 15 or more. Bado. Center field. And a three up, three down inning for Archie Bradley. This could be my last series to ever play in a red uniform, you know, and that's uh, something I can't even, like, I can't even believe that I'm saying, you know. Everything that's happened to me in baseball has happened with this organization, and uh, they've been great to me, and, you know, uh, it's, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. Uh, all right, Jim and Cowboy, that was Jay Bruce today before batting practice talking about the possibility of being traded. We all know that the trade deadline looms, what, 10 days from now, and a lot of talk has been made, and he was very solemn, almost melancholy today about the possibility of leaving the Reds. Hard hit ball, center field. Gene Segura, his second hit of this game. Was there at Jay's locker with everyone else, and... Uh, He's basically said it's 365 straight days of talk about him being traded and he's seemingly been traded a couple of times only to have it fall apart. And as much as he tries to manage it and he's managed it as well or better than anyone that I've ever seen in this situation said listen I'm human man it creeps into my mind. It's a tough situation he understands the business side. He understands what the Reds are doing. Retooling the organization that he's a big time trade chip. But at the end of the day he says I'm human. The next 10 days could literally alter my life. It's it's life altering. He knows nothing but wearing a Reds uniform. Came up through the Red system drafted by the Reds. Been a Red his whole career. He was also reflecting on his idol today, Ken Griffey Jr., and this is Junior's Weekend, along with Mike Piazza, will go into the National Baseball Hall of Fame Sunday in Cooperstown. And he was telling the story about walking in as an 18-year-old. First guy he saw sitting on the big trunk that Junior used to have in his locker was Ken Griffey Jr. Could you imagine idolizing a guy your whole life? Walking in as an 18 year old into the clubhouse, and the first guy you see is Junior. So. Strike three call. And ironically enough, he's now in the same locker that Ken Griffey Jr. had here at GABP. And there is his locker, and right there, hanging in the locker today. Griffey 16 
And he had that bad boy hanging up there for Adley. Bruce is also a Nike guy and under the swingman category of Nike. That swingman logo, that's Griffey. What a weekend it's going to be in Cooperstown. It's Junior. Takes his place amongst the immortals. Bruce was also talking about Griffey. You know, he plays it close to the vest, doesn't show much emotion. Motion said, Junior might be a little vulnerable on Sunday. It might, <laughs> the moment might get to him on Sunday. We'll see. And that was a balk, a balk called. And was that called by the home plate umpire? I think it was, and I think it was because Straley did not. Have any change of direction before he came to the plate. Looked like he was trying to quick pitch there. That's what he called it. No change of direction, no discernible stop. Now a runner in scoring position for Goldschmidt. Australia could use one of those punch outs here and he has struck out seven of the last seven of the last ten outs for strikeouts for Australia. Two zero. -oh. Got him to pop it up. And foul ground Suarez. And a big out. Is now seven balks on the season for Reds pitching. Tied for most in Major League Baseball. So after a two run first, Australia struck out the side in the second. Got a 5 4 3 double play to end the third. Stranded three runners back in the fourth. Now trying to get out of trouble with the runner in scoring position here in the fifth. Yeah, this is the toughest part of having a one run ball game when you have to try to wade through the middle of the order with a runner standing at second base. These early run opportunities that the Reds have, you sure don't want to let the Diamondbacks come back in this one. One ball, no strikes to Jake Lamb. Lamb pops it up. Will there be room? Barnhart. There will not. Off the top of the Reds dugout. He got Lamb on the changeup in his last at bat. That change up there was a bit out over the plate. The one for the strikeout was down in the dirt. One two pitch. Bows it off. Talked about it earlier but man what a season Jake Lamb is putting together. Team leading 21 home runs, top 10 in the league, 65 runs driven in, 21 doubles, eight triples. Six round pick, Jake Lamb, back in 2012, his fifth season. In Arizona's organization. His first full season last year, and now in 2016, really coming into his own. I think the Diamondbacks thought that Lamb would hit, but I don't think they thought he would bring this kind of power. All right.
His first full season last year, 263 average. Six home runs, 34 RBIs in 107 games. He is up the ante big time this year. Lays off. And the count's gone full. Seven pitches in this at bat to the Seattle Washington native Jake Lamb also a major Ken Griffey Junior fan. And how can you not be hailing from Seattle even though he was born October 9th 1990. And you look back on some of the. The different video clips and the replays of. Not just the home runs of Griffey and I and I know that's. What he was known for, but some of the plays that he made in the outfield, oh. climbing the wall, robbing the home runs, I mean, those will live for all time. Well, Jay Bruce said he changed the game, completely changed the game. And he believed that as well. Strike three called. Dan Straley has the strikeout mojo working tonight. You by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. And by Cincinnati Children's, changing the outcome together. Got to be impressed with what Dan Straley has done so far, rebounding from a two run first inning, Cowboy. No doubt about it. He's continued to pound the strike zone. And the amazing part is he has been able to use curveball, slider, and the changeup. And Getting him getting them over with relative consistency, even with tough batters at the plate. Jay Bruce will lead off the fifth for Cincinnati. And Archie Bradley still out there. About to deliver pitch number 90. One batter into the fifth. Well, after that first inning where five runs came across, I'm not sure I would have. Put money on either starter being in the ball game at this point in time. After the first, it looked like it was going to be who outslugs who. Pitchers have settled down. And right now, we got a good old Goodwin ball. Let's try for their third consecutive series victory coming out of the break. Bruce rips it into the right, but going over and getting it nicely. He's Yasmani Tomas. Man, he got a good jump on that ball and a good track. It looked like the Diamondbacks were squeezing that right center field gap. They had Tomas playing a bit over towards 
right center field. That big fella normally doesn't run so good, but they had him playing that way, and as you said, he got a good jump on the ball, able to run it down. The ball was hammered. Now Adam Duvall. Hey, the Reds and Fox Sports Ohio would like to send out a special happy birthday wish to Jim Dobbenmeyer from Lancaster, Ohio. Happy 90th, Jim. Thank you for being a Reds fan. 90. 90. That'd be 9 0. Oh, solid. You're having a great birthday, Jim. Hope you're watching tonight, sitting back and enjoying Reds baseball. Well, I used to drive through Lancaster many times as a kid. I, dad's side of the family down from down near the Athens area, from Columbus to Athens. Now you can kind of go around if they got a highway going around it, but right down Route 33, right through Lancaster. That would be about the time that I would turn to my dad as a kid and beg to stop for a cheeseburger. <laughs> ice cream. There you go. <laughs> Three older brothers and an older sister, and they would be egging me on. Hey, it's about time you start whining at that. Have a dad stop for a cheeseburger. It's funny how the oldest tend to do that. Yeah, I was the youngest. They put it on. They used the, to use me as bait. They put it on bait. the little one. Yeah. yeah. They used to use me as bait. Go in there and see if Dad's mad. Work every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> One-two pitch to Duvall. Two pitch. Out of the way again. Archie Bradley now resides in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. His mother, Pam, this had to be tough, was a principal at the high school. And Archie had to keep close to his books for sure. I would bet. Your mom's a principal, he said. You're held to a different standard. And she would not let him play. If you got anything below a B, <laughs> that's tight. He said, "I knew, I knew she was not playing around. I have a problem. She'll help me out. But if she thinks I'm lazy, there are no excuses." Oh. Duvall hammers one left center field, and that one is off the wall. Duvall chug a lugging into second. Thought about third base, but will hold up. With a double, his 22nd of the season. And now tied with the team for the team lead in doubles with Zach Kozar. That ball was hit so hard it looked like it was going to go through the fence in front of the bullpen. <laughs> and you could see the reaction of Michael Bourne as the ball came off the bat. He knew it was home run distance. He was just kind of jogging towards left center field, didn't realize it was going to hit off the fence. Just didn't get enough height on that one. And off the fence, Reds bullpen. One out, one sitting out there for Brandon Phillips. Phillips, the ball right field. Right at Tomas. The ball goes nowhere. Two outs. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one later on in the game, we'll bring you our Miller Time moment. It's brought to you as always by Miller Lite. Two outs and Duvall at second. De Eugenio Suarez seeking his first hit of the nine. Suarez would like to push that hitting streak to five games. And an RBI to boot would be nice as well. He's trying to extend a one run lead. 
First pitch from Bradley to Suarez. Way ahead. Catch in the stands, I believe. Nice catch down there. Fans brought their A game. <laughs> Just like you, Cowboy. Each and every night. I'd like to see an A game of Suarez right here. Oh, going up and getting it. Quite the celebration. And you know, hold on to that beer now, big fella. Goodness. That was beyond quite the celebration. Dude, can you believe I caught that? <laughs> My hand's broken, but I caught it. One ball, two strikes to Suarez. Fouls it off. This is about how Archie Bradley came at Suarez in his last at bat. He bounced that double curve right there in front of home plate for a strikeout. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Bouncer to third. They're across the diamond. Archie Bradley is through five. Red still lead 3 2. Get the majority of off speed pitches that we've seen from Straley, all of which would have been strikes whether they swing or not. Change up the bottom falling out of it. Back door breaking balls, front door breaking balls, and even a high change up after an awfully good at bat by Jake Lamb, and he still goes down looking. Any yellow hammers in there? I wanted to. How about a Louisiana breakdown? That would qualify. Inning number six, Wellington Castillo to the dish for the D-backs. The first pitch to Arizona's catcher in there for a strike. The Reds have had many opportunities in this ball game to separate themselves. Still got a one-run ball game. In the air, right field. Cruz over towards the line. Make the catch for out number one. 
takes everything to become a national champion. See the players, the course, and major championship history at Scioto Country Club up in Columbus for the U.S. Senior Open. It starts August 8th. For more information and to purchase tickets, go to 2016USSeniorOpen.com. Scioto Country Club. A gem of a course. Columbus. Jack Nicholas's father taught it, him the game. Scioto Country Club. Right center field and hit very well. Bruce against the wall and makes the catch. Dan Straley will applaud that. Both Bruce and Hamilton exchanging glances with one another as they race towards the right center field wall. And Bruce. Basket catch. Right at the last second. You hit that track and you're going sideways. You're used to one or two steps. And then you're on the track and you can see Bruce almost unconsciously feeling for the wall there. Dan Shirelli says thank you very much. Two outs in the inning. Yasmani Tomas doubled last time up. Strella would love to make quick work of Tomas here. He's approaching 90 pitches. For the benefit for Straley. Facing Tomas, you know he's going to swing at anything close. The downside of that for Straley is if you miss over the plate or you hang a pitch, he's going to hammer. Kind of all or nothing, and that's the way Tomas's bats have gone tonight. Strikeout, double. 1-1 one, one pitch. Check swing and a strike. Looked like Straley took a little bit off of that curveball. Just the speed of the pitch fooled. Tomas there. Straley shaking off Barnhart. Now got what he wants. It's trying to turn the tide on the Diamondbacks. Who are eight and two in their last ten games against Cincinnati. Ripped hard into left field. That'll reach the wall. And back to back plate appearances and back to back doubles for Yasmani Tomas. Not where Straley wanted that pitch with two strikes. It was a changeup and he left it middle in and it was up. Pretty good piece of hitting by Tomas there. Normally that's a pitch that a right handed batter pulls foul as that off speed pitch comes in but you can see him really pull his hands in and just get the barrel of the bat to the baseball. Put your spot do up next there is a pinch hitter in the on deck circle as the eight batter Nick Ahmed steps in. Standing on deck is Phil Gosselin. Pitch to Ahmed. Popped him up. And it looks like Straley once again is going to strand another runner. Dan Straley through six innings with a 3 2 lead.
Jr. One of the youngest ever in the major leagues to reach the 300 home run plateau. Ken Griffey Jr. A walk off home run. He's the king of the Queen City tonight. Number 500 is your ticket to the Hall of Fame. Tonight's greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. The Hall of Fame class of 2016, Ken Griffey Jr. and Mike Piazza. You know the numbers for Griffey, a 13-time All-Star. The first number one overall pick to make the Hall of Fame. That's amazing. What is also amazing is Mike Piazza, 12-time All-Star, 10-time Silver Slugger, 427 career home runs, but the 1,390th pick. 62nd round. That is the lowest ever to go into the Hall of Fame, and it's not even close. Guess who the record was held by? John Smoltz. He was drafted number 574. They don't even have a 62nd round anymore, so that's a record that's going to last for a long, long time. Gentlemen? And Tommy Lasorda drafting Mike Piazza was almost as a favor to his father. Yep. Should say almost it was a favor to his dad. Tucker Barnhart, right field and gone. Stay hot. Hot indeed, second straight day with a home run for the Reds catcher. Number five of the season for Tucker Barnhart. Those fastballs that start on the plate and stay on the plate normally get hit hard, especially a ball with that kind of height in the strike zone. And it came off of a new pitcher into the game, Randall Delgado, the righty for the Diamondbacks, and now he'll face the pinch hitter and Kyle Waldrop. So close the book on both starting pitchers tonight. Archie Bradley goes five, gives up three earned runs. Now Dan Straley, six innings, two earned runs. His night is done. 94 pitches tonight from Straley. And right hander Rysel Iglesias cranking it up in the Reds pen. I think if the Reds had had a bigger lead at the moment, you would see Straley head back to the mound. But it seems like every pitch since the first inning on has been a, a nail biting pitch for Dan Straley. So even though it's 90 pitches in six innings, there's a lot more work that went into it just to try to hold the Diamondbacks down. Every pitch was crucial. Kyle Waldrop, 24 year old, Fort Myers, Florida. Waldrop was recalled to the Reds when they sent John Lamb out. He's in one of those situations. Will he remain with the big club or do they want him to play on a daily basis? Exclusively out of the bullpen now for Delgado, but when he came over from the Braves, I think that the Arizona Diamondbacks thought they were getting a starter in Delgado. It just did not pan out. He has been out of the bullpen seemingly the entire time after 19 starts in his first year with the Diamondbacks. Aldrich fouls it off. This season, five for 18. In the Reds uniform, 2016, is Kyle Waldrop. Lays off. Three and two.
3 2 pitch. Left side. Will there be room? There was room, but they couldn't come up with the play. Like the ball bounced out of either Ahmed or Lamb's glove as it went down the line. It off a of fan's glove, that youngster's glove as well. It looked like it hit Lamb's glove and the guy's glove in the fan, or the fan's glove in the stands. Little guy. Ahmed, Ahmed almost caught the ball barehanded on the ricochet. There he is right there. Got the ball. Even though he disrupted the play. 3 2 again. Alder hanging tough. Kid that did get the ball is a little upset. Check out the youngster in the glasses. None too happy. I got out of the way. He says, I, I did what was right. I didn't get the ball. What's up with that? Tenth pitch of the at bat to Kyle Waldrip. We'll do 11 at least. It's a pretty good at bat for a kid that does not get a whole lot of at bats. Coming off the bench cold is no easy task. Even for a veteran player, much less, much less a rookie. Particularly when you're this early in your major league career. And you're used to playing every day. This time it's in play. And it's fielded by the third baseman Lamb. Back to the top of the order, Billy Hamilton. What a show he was putting on early on. Singled in the first, stole second, scored on Joey Votto's home run. Singled in the second, stole second, stole third. Flight out his last time up. Stolen base game for Billy Hamilton. He's got the most of those in his career since his debut. Look at the shoes. Says it all. Speed kills, and indeed it does. 21.7 miles per hour. Going to third, just a tick under that. They need a parachute to stop sliding into those bags. Adidas might have to look into that. A speed kills parachute. Some sweet kicks right there. Those are really nice. <laughs> I was going to say those are nice. Those are. He's got a, about three or four different varieties he wears. Yeah. Looking good. Two pitch to Billy. Ouch. Delgado stayed in on Kyle Waldrop the entire at bat. It looks like he's trying to really get the ball in on Hamilton as well. Castillo will go out to the mound as players often do. Is one of those, I don't want to call it a rule, but one of those unspoken things that they take care of each other. Someone fouls a ball off their leg, they'll give them time. Umpire takes one, catcher will go out, give them time. Catcher takes one, umpire will brush off the play, give them time. This time Billy pops it up. 
And the second straight out via the pop up into the glove of Lamb. Two outs. Kroger and the Reds are proud to team up to offer you a great value this season. It's the Kroger meal deal. Check concession stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger meal deal, which includes a hot dog, bag of chips, 16 ounce Coke, right up Cowboys Alley. During this homestand, David Sunflower Seeds. Make sure you get your Kroger meal deal today. I'm not sure I've ever seen you without one. Sure you have. I have? No, maybe not. <laughs> One strike to Zach Kozar. Just picking up the game. Hamilton and Kozar flip flopped in the order tonight. Hamilton leading off. Kozar now batting second. We'll see if Zach continues the aggressive hitting. He likes to hit that first or second pitch, particularly that first pitch of a bat. Batting second earlier with Billy on base. He was looking at some pitches. First hit leadoff, he said, you know, I was trying to look at pitches and give guys a, a look from the dugout, but then I'd look up, I'd be down 0-2, and the best pitches I've seen in the at bat have already gone by. He put that aside, and since then he's been a solid hitter. Aggressive hitter is his nature. This time on the check swing and the punch out. But Tucker Barnhart delivers the home run. Puts the Reds up by two. Ballpark and this Sunday, thanks to Klosterman Bakery, you can get half price Reds tickets. Lots to do for the kids. Plus, kids 14 and younger will get a Eugenio Suarez Fathead, thanks to Hothead Burritos. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds or visit Reds.com. All right, Dan Straley goes six innings, gives up two earned runs, struck out eight, and now on. Russell Iglesias. Iglesias just gives you some comfortability in the middle of the ball game. You know you bring him in in the seventh inning, he can give you the seventh and the eighth, and then you can get to your final pitcher, whoever that may be, whether it's Lorenzen, whether it's Singrani or Ollendorf. But you got to imagine sooner or later, this kid is going to move to the back end of the bullpen the way he's throwing the ball right now. Well, he'll deal with a pinch hitter to lead off the top of the seventh for the Diamondbacks. It's lefty Mike Freeman. The only lefty on the bench, Chip Hale. Glacius has been 
solid. In each of his last six appearances, all scoreless. He's thrown at least two innings in the last six appearances. And that also includes a career high three innings in relief back on the fifth at Chicago. And I asked you this earlier in the homestand. You said eventually you think he's going to move to the back end of the bullpen. Is it time to throw him one inning at a time and well, see if he can go back to back days. I think that's that's ultimately is going to be the, the key for Iglesias. He's got to be able to pitch three days in a row if you're going to close. And if you can't do that if his shoulders not going to allow him to do it or if it's not something that he can physically handle then he'll have to stay in this role. Sell. One out here in the seventh. And now the top of the order, Gene Segura. Segura's faced Iglesias three times in his career, the former Brewer. 0 for 3. You can also close the book on Randall Delgado. One inning, one run off the bat of Tucker Barnhart. Swing and a miss. That one run in this ball game becomes huge because you give. Your pitcher's a lot more flexibility. You don't have to worry about one swing in the bat beating you. Go to pitch to Segura. On the way. Swing and a miss. Holding bad. Ninth strikeout for Reds pitching. Drop down. Slider looks like it's on the plate the entire time in the eyes of Gene Segura just for the angle that Iglesias releases it from almost stepping towards the third base dugout as he dropped that one on him. Diamondbacks have a lefty warming up the pin and Zach Curtis with Votto and Bruce set to lead off the bottom of the seventh. For the Reds. Curtis is the Lone Ranger as far as lefties are concerned in their bullpen. There's nine people down there in the pen and only one the Southpaw. Hamilton went over and got it. Had to reach up a little higher than he probably anticipated. A gentle leap. A one, two, three inning. Rysel Iglesias.
Tomorrow, MLB on FS1 starting at 4 p.m. You can see Buster Posey and the Giants face the Yankees. And at 6.30, our coverage of Reds baseball starts with Reds Live. 6.30 followed by game action at 7. As always, you can stream it all live on Fox Sports Go. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks, rookie left-hander, Zach Curtis. 5'9 left-hander. He's only been in the minor leagues two years. Joined their organization in 2014 out of Tennessee State University. Six round pick back in 2014. Born in Castilian Springs, Tennessee, 24 years of age. His first pitch to Joey Votto. Outside ball one. Hard late breaking slider. That's the key pitch for Curtis. Wearing the specs on the mound. A 1 0 to Votto. Side again. Votto with the big blow in this game. A three run home run. Of Archie Bradley back in the first since lined out and flat out. The 2 0. He wants no part of Joey Votto. At least in the first three pitches. Close. Four pitch walk to Votto. Follow each and every Reds game here in Fox Sports Ohio. Stick around for Reds Live, the post game edition. You'll hear from the manager before anyone else. Extended highlights, so much more. It's brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Sixth walk of the game given up by Diamondbacks pitching. When you're a left hander coming out of the bullpen and you're facing a left handed batter your object is to make that left handed batter swing the bat. Being the only left hander that the Diamondbacks have it's the only option for manager Chip Hale. Well he's got that odd line when you look at the lefty righty splits for Zach Curtis versus left handed pitching. 280 opponent batting average against right he's just 143 so you would think they brought him in as a so called lefty specialist in this situation facing Votto and Bruce back to back lefties but numbers would suggest he's better against right handers early on in his career. Well, I think the Diamondbacks would like for Zach Curtis to be a lefty That's on why lefty I said so called matchup <laughs> pitcher but Right now it appears he's having to work his way into that category. No pitch to Bruce. Check swing. Peel down to third. No. Says crew chief Jerry Davis. But for a lefty specialist on the bullpen you've got to be able to throw your breaking ball for a strike with some pretty good consistency. Hitters count. 2 0. Liberal call of a strike by Carlos Torres. Jay thought it was outside. I thought it was outside. What'd you think? I thought it was outside. Tick tack toe. Two one. Same location this time called a ball. Exact location. 
right over top of the third pitch on the box tracks. Here's Castillo and home plate umpire having a bit of a conversation as Bruce steps out. Castillo's got to be thinking that's exactly where I caught the other pitch. Yep. Three one. Plays off. Full count. Jay Bruce wanted to lay a bunt down the third base side. There is no one home even close. Two strikes. Gonna happen here. And walks back to back batters. Zach Curtis brought in to face the lefties. And exactly what Chip Hale didn't want. And here comes Chip Hale to the mound. Silvio Bracho has been warming up in the pen, and here he comes. He'll take over for Zach Curtis. It's our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. This season, a great American ballpark. Tomorrow, thanks to Fox Sports Ohio, the first 25,000 fans will receive a Reds cap. Catch all the action when your Reds take on the Diamondbacks for just $12. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds or visit Reds.com. New pitcher, Silvino Bracho. 24 year old hailing from Venezuela. He'll face Adam Duvall. Nobody out. Runners on first and second. And it's been up and down for Bracho this season. This is his fourth stint with the Diamondbacks in 2016. He was most recently recalled from Triple A Reno on June 25th. He's had trouble throwing strikes. He's had trouble with the home run ball as well. Not a real good combo. No. Off the mask of Castillo. Bang. Wonder why catchers have concussion symptoms. That's why. There it is. Still, still shaking his head. Well, once again, players taking care of each other. Ahmed came in to talk to Bracho and gave Castillo a few extra moments. One ball, one strike.
swing and a miss. And Duvall wanted all of that one. Votto takes his lead from second. Bruce his lead from first. Both were walked in this inning. And the one two to Duvall. And we'll do the one two again. was signed as an amateur free agent back in 2011 out of Venezuela. Fouling off that breaking ball, Duvall may have set himself up for another fastball here. Steele goes through the signs. And now here comes the one two again. Ground ball left side. Ahmed on the first base, and they turn two. Six four three double play and a rather big one with two on and nobody out. Well, Duvall got the fastball it just happened to be right on his hands. You've got two former shortstops turning that double play with Segura and Ahmed you got rid of it pretty quick. Votto moved to third base on the play. With two outs, it's Brandon Phillips. First pitch strike, Phillips. Hit by a pitch back in the first. The ball glanced off his elbow. Rounded out the second and the third, fly out in the fifth. Bracho ahead, 0 2. Pitch. Out on. You can see Castillo. Curveball, slider he's calling for, and Rancho continues to shake to the fastball. One and two. Split screen, you'll see the signs and got that number one right away. Phillips punches it to right field, an RBI base hit for Brandon. And the Reds lead 5-2. to two. Good piece of hitting, Brandon Phillips. You can 
tell Phillips was looking out over the plate. That fastball was probably not going to be a strike unless Brandon swings stays on top of it enough to line it into right field. Extending his hitting streak to 10 games now. That is the longest hitting streak currently on this Reds team. Suarez would like to extend his hitting streak to five games working on an 0 for two nights so far. Pitch from Bracho. Bounces, gets by Castillo, and Phillips will trot down to second base. Back up breaking ball. And that happened to fool Castillo. See the spin on the ball that's supposed to break down and away, and it just continues to spin back towards the hitter, and it caught the edge of the mitt of Castillo. Score that one a pass ball on Castillo. Suarez can play a little add on Phillips now at second base. Waited for that breaking ball. Punched it foul. Looked as though Suarez was looking for the breaking ball the way he swung at that pitch. But even that one did not break back over the plate. It just continued to spin on the inside corner. Count stays at one two. That scored three in the first off of Vivado home run. One in the six Tucker Barnhart home run. Now one here so far in the seventh for a 5-2 lead. One two again. Upstairs two and two. 94 mile per hour heater from Silvino Bracho. Swing and a miss. Bracho gets Suarez, but the Reds add a run. Lead by three.
in the first. Gene Segura led off this game with a home run. It was part of a two run first inning off of Dan Straley, but Straley settled right in. He had the strikeouts going tonight, eight of them through six innings, two earned runs. Backed up by his offense. Joey Votto, the big blast in this game. It came in the bottom of the first, a three run home run. Opposite field is 17th of the season. Tucker Barnhart got on the home run parade. Both of those guys back to back days with a home run each. The fifth one of the season overall for Tucker. They just added a run on the RBI single by Brandon Phillips in the seventh, and that's where we stand. 5 2 is your score, and Marcella Glacius on for a second inning of work out of the pen. Tangle with Paul Goldschmidt. This is really what we've seen from the Reds on this homestand. They've been swinging the bats, putting some runs on the board with some semblance of regularity. And good starting pitching. Now all that's left in this ball game is to finish up strong out of the bullpen. A meat of the order, Goldschmidt and Lamb. Tearing it up offensively this season and so far have been held in check tonight. Glacius has held Goldschmidt in check in his career. Faced him five times. Goldschmidt's 0 for 5. Including three strikeouts. Rysel behind 3 1. Make it 3 2. Jake Lamb on deck. Side and he walked him. Fourth walk of the game given up by Reds pitching. One has been an intentional walk. Now Jake Lamb struck out his last two plate appearances. Walked back in the first and stole a base, but was stranded. First pitch strike, 93 on the gun. The last two at bats for Lamb, the changeup has been the, the pitch he's had the most difficult time with. Up there, holding badly. It's just guessing fastball, and you get anything but. No balls, two strikes. One and two. Lamb one for four. Overall off of Iglesias. Previous encounters. Swing and a miss. And I sell. Second strikeout for Iglesias. One out in the inning. Three consecutive changeups. All right at 88 miles an hour, and all three of those pitches. Lamb seemed to be moving the hands forward just out in front. Pretty pitch. That'll bring up Wellington Castillo.
Castillo has one hit and five plate appearances versus Iglesias that one hit. A home run. There are times when Iglesias throws the baseball it seems like he's got a joystick controlling it as it gets to home play. I think I'll make this one go in. I'll make this one dart away. One one. Had him off balance. One and two. So off balance that he dropped the bat. Take his helmet off and think about it for a minute. Three pitches so far, and an inning in a third for Iglesias. One, two. Right field. Who's there? Two outs. MLS Soccer Sunday, sponsored by Audi, returns this week with a red hot rivalry. Don't miss. New York City FC will be football club Cowboy. battles their crosstown rivals the New York Red Bulls tune in at 1230 p.m. Eastern time on Fox or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Or should I say football as in playing the game with your feet. Exactly. That would be F U T B O L. Football. Got it. Here's Brandon Drury. 0 for 2 and a walk tonight. That first pitch may be the best pitch you get to hit from Iglesias. Walk Paul Goldschmidt to end or lead off the eighth inning. Since retired back to back batters on the heels of a 1 2 3 7 for Iglesias. Oh, strike two call. Straight over the top, four seamer, right on the money. Ball, 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 strike. To drive a hitter nuts. One pitch he's coming over top, the next he's three quarters, then he's down sidearm. And the ability to start the ball off the plate where it looks like a ball the entire path of the pitch until the last second. He is exciting to watch. We've seen him crank that fastball up in the 98 range when he wants to. He can rear back and get him some. We're talking working out of the pen when he was a starter, he wouldn't rear back. Get that. But now, working out of the bullpen, he can be a flamethrower if he wants to be. A one two pitch. Didn't quite start that one over the plate as he did in the previous breaking balls. Looked like he just gave Barnhart a sign for a high fastball. There it is. And there it comes. The strike three called. Rysel. Two innings scoreless, and indeed. Strikeout number 11 from Reds pitching tonight.
bottom of the eighth for the Reds, and he's the subject of Frank's Volkswagen drive of the game his last time up. Tucker, second straight day with a home run. He's been swinging a hot bat. He gave the Reds a 5 or 4 2 lead. They've since added to it. Lead 5 2 here in the eighth. New pitcher on for Arizona, Enrique Burgos. 6'4, 250. Spent some time, three different stints with the Diamondbacks last year. Shot the ball pretty well here in his last seven, eight ball games. First pitch to Tucker. Called strike one. Burgos born in Panama, 25 years of age. Signed as an amateur free agent back in 2007. O2 to Barnhart. One ball, two strikes. Strike three call. Barnhart takes a seat. Now a pinch hitter. Von de Jesus Jr. will stroll to the plate. Double barreled action in the Reds pen. Tony Sangrani was warming up to start the inning. Now Jumbo Diaz throwing. I would imagine the Reds would play add on. We might see Jumbo. But the score remains five to two. Not just guessing here. We'll see Tony Sagrani. I think you're right on the money. Billy Hamilton on deck. So far, a good night for the home squad, even though they fell behind 2 0. Pretty good answer in the bottom of the first, though. <laughs> Indeed, it was. Hamilton singled, Kozar walked, Joey Votto, opposite field, three run home run. That's your first three batters of the game. First three batters. Bang, bang, bang. Erased a 2 0 deficit like that. Reds had a golden opportunity to add on in that inning as well. Bruce reached on an infield hit. Phillips was hit by a pitch back in the first. Suarez walked, but the Diamondbacks turned a 3 6 1 double play. Just limited the, da the damage to three. Could have been a really big inning. Asus, ground ball to Goldschmidt. Puts it over to Burgos. Two outs. said to him. Cracked him up. Of course you rarely don't rarely see Billy Hamilton without a smile. He's about as easy going and fun loving if you will as they come. Squares around a bunt. Castillo couldn't even catch the baseball. I think it just freaks everyone out. Everybody, Everybody panics. Everybody panics. Well, 
Well, they're 0 for 2 on trying to catch pitches in this at bat. Two to the backstop. Corner infielders playing in on the grass. With a three run deficit. That's Billy Hamilton. Squares around, pulls it back. That ball appeared to be headed for the backstop as well. Pretty good stab catch by Castillo. He was setting up away and had to glove the ball down and in. A four pitch walk. To the last guy in the lineup you want to walk. That is now eight walks given up by the Diamondbacks tonight. Billy Hamilton already with three steals in this game. Thirty stolen bases overall. Been caught only five times. And has been aboard three of his five times tonight. I think that is something that you want to see out of your leadoff hitter. Solidifies that move. If you're just joining us, Brian Price flip-flopping Hamilton and Cozart in the order. There's eight. Base on balls for the Reds. Matches a season high for Reds hitters this year. Atlanta, back on June 13th, walked eight against Cincinnati. Outside. Takes his lead, inching off, throw over. Yeah. Hamilton just driving him nuts. Major distraction. And whoever hits behind Hamilton, in this case Cozart, you're going to get some pitches, some mistake pitches, because Hamilton will get in your head and it'll make pitchers deliver to spots they don't want to pitch to. Now an even bigger lead for Hamilton. Doesn't go this time. And called strike. Ozark looking for his first hit of the night. Out back. Was going to run, he would have gone by now. Fake's going. Count is now 2 2 to Kozar. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Throw over. First base umpire Rob Drake, he is right on top of first base. He's in Goldschmidt's back pocket. There goes Billy. 
Swung on, hit into left field. That's down the left field line. Forget about it. Hamilton's going to score easily. Zach Cozart, RBI, double 6 2, Cincinnati. That's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Cozart, his 23rd double this season, leading the Reds team. And Hamilton, if Cozart continues to deliver, is going to score a lot. Picked a pretty good pitch to run on. Double into the corner. That's low flying right there. Really didn't even crank it up. I think that's one of the things that can make the Reds dangerous offensively. Even with two outs, as we've seen in this inning, Hamilton gets aboard. <laughs> scores on a base hit. We're going to intentionally pass Joey Votto. With first base open. They'll put it in the hands of Jay Bruce with two outs. By the way, I can't believe it took this long to mention this, but this is. Grateful Dead tribute night at the ballpark and I was really expecting you to wear your tie dye shirt. Because I know you're a big deadhead. Who are you talking to? Oh you're not I'm a deadhead? Oh I'm sorry. Oh, I sound the wrong guy. I know what they say. Come on. I'm not kidding. You don't know what they say? All right. That's big in San Francisco though. <laughs> it is indeed. By the way, we want to thank Papa John's for taking care of our crew tonight with a little pizza action up here in the booth. There you go. I had one slice. Oh, well, maybe it was two. It might have been three. I will go with the latter. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't spill any on your shirt. That was large. You know what? I am. Amongst the messiest eaters on the planet, I wear half my food. It's embarrassing. It happens. Well, you would think at this later stage of my life that I would have figured out, especially as big a mouth as I got. Now, how do you miss it? One ball, one strike. Jay Bruce looking good up there on that scoreboard. The beard look and the glasses for the Grateful Dead night. <laughs> Take him out. Yeah. One one pitch to him. Each and every batter that's come to the plate, they've had the bearded look and the sunglasses. of Mr. Garcia. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Red strand two. But they had a run. And lead six two.
every single Reds game here on Fox Sports Ohio. It is Reds Live, brought to you by Ray St. Clair Roofing. We'll hit you tomorrow night at 6.30, game to follow at 7.10. Tomorrow's starters, Kiva Sampson and Robbie Ray making his 20th start. Sampson making his first of this season, and as I said, Reds Live at 6.30. But not soon behind, it could be Homer Bailey's return to the rotation. Why? Well, he goes on the 25th. Last time out, he threw 83 pitches. And if you do the math, he could pitch, guys, next Saturday or Sunday in San Diego. So it'll be interesting to see as he makes his sixth start on the 25th, five days after that, would be next weekend in San Diego. We'll see. Well, they'd like to get him past that 90 pitch mark next time out. That seems like forever since we've seen Bailey out there. It'd be nice to get him back. And now on the, in the ninth, with a four-run lead, it's Tony Singrani. And he'll do battle with Yasmani Tomas, Nick Ahmed, and a pinch hitter. The Reds run there in the eighth inning. This is not a safe situation. Singrani might face back to back pinch hitters because on the on deck circles Phil Goslin. Set to bat for Nick Ahmed. First dealing with Tomas and he strikes him out looking. Not, not sure what Tomas is arguing about there. Maybe a bit down, I guess. Close enough with two strikes. Good frame job by Barnhart. And it is Phil Goslin here, with one out in the ninth. Goslin's proved to be pretty good in the pinch hit department. Standing on deck, the former Reds killer Ricky Weeks Jr., the former Brewer, now an Arizona Diamondback. Skyball. Hamilton calling off Duvall, and the Diamondbacks are down to their last out. Ricky Weeks, who is now going by Ricky Weeks Jr. Not that he was never a junior, obviously, before. We just never saw it listed, particularly on the back of his jersey. Over for 5 in his career off of Singrani. Trying to win game one of this three game set. Continue their better play coming out of the break.
Two balls, one strike. Two one pitch. And he gloves the final out in a 6-2 victory for the Reds. So the Reds, after taking two out of three from Milwaukee, taking two out of three from Atlanta, win game one of this three-game set against the Diamondbacks and have now won five of seven coming out of the All-Star break. We'll be back with more right after this on your home for Reds baseball, Fox Sports. Go on.